Okay, so let's talk uh, green tea real quick before we talk about whether or not uh, he should avoid it or utilize it. Um, so uh, the active component, I guess, within in green tea is uh, phytochemicals. And phytochemicals um, are basically produced by plants. Um, they can be poisonous. They can be medicinal. All depends on you know which phytochemical we're talking about. Um, and they come in numerous classes. Amongst them are alkaloids, polyphenols. Within polyphenols, you have flavonoids and non-flavonoids. Within flavonoids, 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 I'm not sure how to say it, catechins. So, so within phytochemicals, we go down a couple classes and we get to catechins, and that's what we're concerned with because that's what we're looking at when we, or what we're talking about when we're discussing green tea. Um, four major types of them, uh, they all have uh, long words and acronyms, and the, the one that we're probably most concerned with and that I see most of the studies mention mm -hmm. and is usually touted on the label of green tea extract or green tea itself is uh, epigallocatechin 3 gallate and we're oh, just going to yes. yeah that nice. one. Oh, that one yeah, yeah, yeah. it's egcg <laughs> so egcg that's that's the one so and and the benefit of egcg in particular but catechins in general is uh, numerous and, and kind of wide ranging in, in terms of their health benefit benefits they're antioxidant which you know we're, we're us being endurance athletes and undergoing a lot of oxidative stress on a pretty routine level that's a big win. Um, Anti-inflammatory, who doesn't want less inflammation? Um, Anti-carcinogenic, cancer's mm -hmm. never a good thing. Antihypertensive, so it can bring your blood pressure down. Antimicrobial, so it can help in combating infection. Um, and then for what it's worth, just I just wanted to touch on really quickly how we're always talking about antioxidants and how they blunt the adaptive effect of workouts and you don't want antioxidants after your workouts. And then we get the question, well, what about antioxidant foods? And it doesn't really carry between supplements and foods. Mm -hmm. So supplements post-workout, if you're in a, you know, a building phase where you actually want the adaptation, try to avoid supplementation because they're effectively megadoses of antioxidants. Whereas within food, it's really hard to OD on antioxidants to the point where you blunt that adaptive response. Hmm, that's good to know. So food afterwards yeah it's, go crazy. It's, it's like the basic is like if you're get, if you're eating whole foods you can never get too much pretty much can't because because yeah. the quantities you have to eat them mm -hmm. in are ridiculous yeah. and kilograms and or pounds of things yeah, yeah. I, I so i take egcg mm -hmm. as a supplement and to time it i don't know what's the i don't know how close i can time it what i do though is i work out at like 3 to 4 p.m uh -huh. and then i take it at 8 a.m I don't know if there's any research that shows like <laughs> if you take it like, you know, opposite 12 hours away, yeah, if you're going to blunt it less. But for me, anti-carcinogenic, like cancer is one of my big scares, right? Mm -hmm. You do all this and then you're gone at 40 or something. Sure. Um, yeah. That's not yeah, fun. And that, I didn't dig into the timing of, of intake though. So can't okay. help you much on that front, but you know, maybe we can look into that a little later. And if anyone knows about that, I've looked for this before. So if oh, anyone okay. listening knows, please yeah, know. uh, send us a message either in the forum, email us or uh, put on YouTube. But that would be, I think that's yeah. another interesting study to see if you can like when, cause I think everyone thinks they should be taking antioxidants, mm -hmm. but can yeah. I not blunt and my micronutrients and, and the like The timing is a pretty big deal. Yeah. yeah. I, you, you could almost have like a time schedule for the day and and when you should take each thing and like depending on how many supplements you have that's like what i do yeah yeah, yeah. But you take a lot at the, all at the same time right yeah but i but they're all geared to be the, okay. like 12 hours away yeah uh, time released yeah well <laughs> not time released but i just want them far, far away, away yeah, from far away. on the opposite side of my workout okay. day. i guess that would be three in the morning but i'm not going to wake up at three in the morning well, to take a bunch not, not till next year when you're really going for it yeah exactly <laughs> okay so other benefits of catechins um are that they're neuro and dna protect protective um just lost my spot. Oh, and can have an effect on cholesterol, lower cholesterol, um, LDL in particular, the low density, more harmful form. Um, there's also thermogenic and, and metabolizing increasing properties. And I think that's why most people try to uh, incorporate green tea mm -hmm. into their diet or uh, endurance based diets. Um, so basically everything we just discussed is based is, is disease preventing attributes. So all desirable. And for those reasons alone, I don't see a reason to, to avoid it. I mean, even if it did show that it blunts the effect of carbohydrate, it would have to be to a pretty high degree for me to fly in the face of all those benefits just to save a little bit of endurance. Yeah. And for the, sure. the meta metabolism increasing properties, mm -hmm. um, there's studies, you can Google them, but significant body fat reduction mm -hmm. when supplementing EGCG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that could also like kind of counteract the, <clears throat> or balance it out if you think that there's going to blunt some of your adaptions or something like that. Yes. So um, in, in, within green tea, there's a couple things that actually work together. So caffeine, we know caffeine is a component of it, and we know we, we've discussed ad nauseum the benefits of caffeine, especially for endurance athletes, even if solely to reduce RPE, but there are others mm -hmm. as well. And then something called L-theanine. 
um, which has psychoactive properties. So it basically acts on the brain, which mm. again, probably is, is uh, going to be RPE related. But in any case, these two things in concert work really well together. Um, caffeine, we know, mobilizes free fatty acids. Uh, it, it aids in glycogen resynthesis. Um, it affects our alertness, you know, our cognition. cognition. And then the two together have synergistic effects, which affect uh, or can alter or give you a, a more stable mood. So mood stabilization is the term. Improve your focus, and that might be as much tied to caffeine, but it, the synergistic effect actually enhances that. And... That's like the smoothness of green tea versus like a shot of espresso. Right? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think that's. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been calling it L theanine, but L theanine, that's probably, I think you're much better pronouncing these things than I am. <laughs> so, some of them I actually, Emma says, have you ever been to that website? I don't know. It's, it's a pretty good okay. resource. <laughs> Thank you. L theanine. So this is a supplement that you can buy and it's really cheap. I take it in 200 milligram, like one pill is 200 milligrams, but mm -hmm. you, I take. Maybe it's four. I take whatever double, like two pills of it, and I take it every morning with the caffeine too. It can have people on the internet, they report like lower anxiety, but it also, it's just a smoother caffeine mm -hmm. release. Yeah. And now too, um, recently I've seen some kind of like no dose products where it's caffeine where they put L theanine no in it too at the same time to <laughs> kind of smooth it out. Yep. Um, it's also in some sleep products like before bed because it has like a calming attribute. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is all total BS, but it, it's been reported in many times and it's a uh, amino acid it's generally thought of as pretty safe mm -hmm. so interesting stuff I interesting indeed okay so when it comes to the performance benefit um not a whole lot of literature to support it unless you're a mouse and and i know that they can extrapolate <laughs> animal findings to human expectations yeah. and they do it all the time so maybe there's something there but in the case of mice um there was a slight endurance capacity increase is that with caffeine or just green tea without caffeine? I'm pretty sure that was, it might've been EGCG specifically. Okay. It's a great time to be a mouse. They've cured cancer and <laughs> yeah. like all sorts of things. <laughs> yep. Um, there there <clears throat> was a study that showed there might be a positive benefit on muscle wasting. There was a study that showed there might be improvement in immune function. Um, but all of these can just as, all, all these studies are often enough countered with something that shows that there weren't effects, the same effects or maybe effects to the contrary. And then there was one study that showed it might improve uh, VO2 max because the extraction of oxygen from the blood to the muscle is slightly improved. Hmm. So there are things that say, yeah, might, might be worthwhile from an endurance perspective, endurance performance improvement perspective. Um, and then as far as the studies on how it interacts with carbohydrate and maybe tones down the effect of carbohydrate, that was a tough one. Um, there was one in 2010 that suggested polyphenols inhibit inhibit carbohydrate digestion but then there's another one in 2015 which i think was a meta study that showed that reduced blood glucose level blood glucose levels due to improved insulin sensitivity hmm. which kind of kind of counters yeah kind of counters that so uh, the evidence seems to support that there is improved blood sugar homeostasis and that alone again uh, t to me says it speaks in favor of yeah. utilizing Sounds yes. like a risk I'd be willing to take for, yeah. for the benefits here. Yeah, it sounds like it's either like neutral to good for, mm -hmm. for performance, but good for health. Yeah. Right. Which is the, the takeaway. And, and then so, so, so really th this boils down to <clears throat> antioxidants and, and getting high quality antioxidants and of course timing it right. But basically our recommendation is and will probably always be get it through whole foods when possible. So fruits and vegetables, largely. Um, coffee and tea absolutely factor into that and then supplements and and my take is supplements are really only appropriate when there's a, a recognized deficiency mm -hmm. i don't take supplements just for the take of su taking supplements or just for the sake of taking supplements <laughs> i know other people disagree and that's totally okay that's, that's totally fine yeah, that's no. just my view on the matter i i uh, i know i have expensive pee um <laughs> yes, you do. but I'm in so, my mind uh, it's amazing <laughs> the fruits and vegetables and coffee and green tea and supplements you're covering I just, a, you're I just covering want, a lot of bases. I want to cover. I want to live forever. Like, <laughs> Lord has I want to live a long time. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, and, and, and you you do eat pretty healthy, very healthy. I do eat. Probably, yeah, yeah. Probably here at the office. Your diet and your habits have like just keep improving, keep improving steadily, yeah. and and they're all maintainable or sustainable, which is is the key. Mm -hmm. I'm Nate, and I'm Pete. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give it a thumbs down and uh, let us know what you would do in the comments below. If you want more of these videos, please subscribe to us. And if you want to become a faster cyclist, check out trainerroad.com.
We need a timer. 